Usually we are recording this seminar, so the seminar will be uploaded on our channel and on YouTube afterwards, so uh, you will have the opportunity to, to watch again some part of it if you wish it or to uh, share it with your colleagues on your social media. Let's go to the, to the speaker today. Today we have with us uh, uh, Alessia Bertero, which is a PhD at the Department of uh, environmental science and policies at, at the University of Milan. She works in the group of um, Professor Caloni. Uh, she has a master degree in veterinary medicine at the University of Torino. Then she got a PhD in agricultural forest and food science, uh, during which she spends a lot of time abroad, in particular in France and in, in Brazil. Uh, today, she, she will tell us something about her main area of interest, that is the emerging and traditional role of mycotoxins, and in particular, um, the toxicological evaluation of these two kinds of toxins in in vitro models. Uh, so, um, Alessia, welcome. The stage is yours. Hello, thank you for your very kind uh, presentation. Now, I will try to share my screen. Sorry, I have host disable attendee screen for sharing. Do you know why it usually I works? Don't know why you have to click on share screen, which is in the bottom of the. Uh, yeah, I did. Ill okay. As uh, right. usually, I, I am a co-host right. now. Okay. okay. I need to be a co-host to, to share my screen. Thanks very much. Now it will work. Please, could you tell me if you see it? I think. Yes. Oh, perfect. We see. Oh. Perfect. Let's, it is yours. let's start. So good afternoon again. Uh, today we are going to talk about an integrated in vitro approach for the uh, evaluation of uh, emerging mycotoxins. So, uh, mycotoxins are low molecular weight second metabolites that are produced by a huge variety of molds, mainly belonging to the uh, Fusarium, Aspergillus and Penicillium uh, genera. These filamentous fungi can contaminate many food and feed commodities, especially but not exclusively grain and grain-based uh, products. For instance, they can also uh, be isolated in um, fruit, vegetables, dried products, wine, species, coffee, and so on. Uh, today, due to new technologies that uh, enable multi-mycotoxin screenings, a high prevalence of the so-called emerging mycotoxins has been uh, observed. These are uh, mycotoxins that are neither uh, routinely searched nor regulated by law, but whose uh, uh, incidence is rapidly uh, growing. Emerging uh, mycotoxins like uh, eniatins, uh, bovericin, are uh, commonly found in cereal grain, derived products, and uh, feedstuffs all over the world. And because of their uh, ubiquity, they represent a major concern for production, as well as for uh, human and animal health. Moreover, uh, emerging mycotoxins frequently occur in combination with other uh, so-called traditional mycotoxins, such as uh, zeralenon and many, uh, many others. Indeed, many in vitro studies have pointed out that a key role is played by the uh, co-exposure, together with other important factors, such as, uh, of course, the type of mycotoxin, dosages, times, and so on. So, eniatins are emerging mycotoxins that are produced by many fusarium species. Uh, eniatins are commonly found in grains, derived products, but also in fish, dried fruits, nuts, species, cocoa, coffee, etc. Many eniatin uh, analog analogs have been isolated and uh, identified. 
from type A to uh, G, but uh, uh, among them, the most uh, prevalent as uh, natural contaminant in cereal in uh, Europe are the eniatin A, A1, B, and B1. Eniatins can exert a wide range of biological activities. Indeed, they are known to be antibacterial, antimintic, antifungal, herbicidal, and insecticidal uh, compounds. As for the mechanism of action, it has not been fully understood yet, but uh, we know that the ionophoric properties of uh, eniatins allow them to be uh, incorporated into the lipid bilayer of the cellular uh, membranes, where they form ion-selective pore that cause an uh, increase in the cation permeability, leading to an uh, alteration of the physiological ion uh, levels inside and uh, outside the uh, cells. Uh, besides their ionophoric nature, eniatin toxicity also involves the inhibition of the acyl-CoA uh, enzyme and the induction of uh, uh, oxidative stress. Uh, moreover, eniatin uh, toxicity can be uh, enhanced by the co-exposure with other uh, compounds, with other mycotoxins. Uh, Bovericin is another emerging mycotoxin that is produced by several Fusarium species. It is a natural contaminant of uh, uh, grain and uh, grain-based product, but uh, it can also be found in eggs, nuts, uh, dried fruits, coffee, and so on. Bovericin 2 uh, has an extensive range of uh, uh, biological properties. It is an insecticidal, antibacterial and antifungal molecule. As for the mechanism of action, bovericin 2 is um, an ionophore. Thus, uh, its mechanism of action is quite uh, similar to that of uh, eniatins. Uh, Zeralenone is another uh, mycotoxin, but it is a traditional one and it is produced by many molds, mainly belonging to the Fusarium genus. Zeralenone is uh, frequently isolated in grains, mainly uh, corn, but it can also be found in, uh, uh, found in barley, oats, wheat, sorghum, millet, rice, and the cereal products such as flour, malt, soybeans, and also in uh, beer. It is a natural endocrine disruptor. Indeed, there are evidences that uh, zeralenon and their metabolites uh, possess estrogenic activity in many uh, species, in sheep, in pig, and uh, cattle. So now just two words about the endocrine disruptors and their uh, effects. We know that uh, some uh, substances such as uh, mycotoxins like uh, zeralenone can have uh, disruptive effects on the hormonal uh, balance. Indeed, this molecule can exert harmful um, effect on the endocrine system, perturbing it. So hormones act in very small uh, amounts at uh, very precise moments to regulate the organism's uh, functionalities. And the endocrine disruptors interfere exactly with the delicate cascade of the hormonal uh, signal. And uh, they can do it in at least one of, uh, three, uh, of these three possible ways. They can mimic the action of naturally produced hormone, such as estrogen or testosterone, thereby uh, setting off a similar response in the body. They can block the hormone receptors, thereby uh, preventing the endogenous hormones to act and they can affect synthesis, transport, metabolism, or excretion of the endogenous hormones, uh, thus altering their uh, physiological uh, levels. 
These are all um, aspects related to mycotoxin toxicity that can be investigated in vitro uh, using a cellular uh, model. We are going to talk about that in a moment, but for, uh, for now, let's start with our first in vitro model that is represented by CACO2 uh, cells cultured on uh, inserts. This uh, cell line is, uh, was obtained from a human colon adenocarcinoma and it has the peculiarity to uh, undergo spontaneous differentiation when the cells are cultured on uh, semi-permeable uh, membranes, uh, which are the so-called uh, inserts that we use in this type of uh, culture. After uh, differentiation, the CACO2 cells express uh, many morphological and uh, biochemical characteristics that are uh, typical of uh, the mature enterocytes in vivo. This is a suitable in vitro model for toxicological and also transport evaluations. The other cell model is represented by ipec 2 uh, cells, again cultured on uh, insert. This is a non-transformed, not carcinoma uh, derived, immortalized cell line that is obtained from the mid jejunum of piglets that are less than 12 hours old. This cell line too is able to undergo spontaneous differentiation when uh, the cells are cultured on uh, insert. And uh, after differentiation and polarization, the cells show morphological and functional uh, characteristics that are similar to the uh, intestinal cells in uh, vivo. So this cell line is uh, useful for studies on the epithelial transport interaction with the enteric bacteria and to evaluate the effects of uh, various uh, substances through the analysis of uh, specific endpoints, uh, which are parameters that uh, reflect the epithelial uh, functionality, such as uh, the transepithelial electrical resistance, permeability, etc. Uh, the data that I'm going to show are the preliminary results of a part of my postdoc project. So the aim of the study is uh, to evaluate the possible toxicological effects of anatin B1 alone and uh, in association with bovericin and zeralenon on human and uh, species-specific intestinal barriers, namely on human CACO2 cells and swine IPEC-J2 cells, both uh, uh, cultured on uh, insert. The evaluated uh, endpoints are the barrier integrity in terms of uh, uh, transepithelial electrical uh, resistance evaluation and uh, uh, pro-inflammatory mediator uh, release, um, specifically interleukin-8. So the CACO2 uh, cells are seeded at a density of 300,000 cells for square uh, centimeter. The medium changes is performed three times per week on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And under our uh, standard laboratory uh, condition, the differentiation and barrier uh, formation is achieved in 21 uh, days. Here we have a graphical representation of our uh, system. I don't know if I can find a spotlight. Maybe, okay. So we can see the uh, semi-permeable membrane. Uh, in blue, we have the, uh, all the insert, semi-permeable membrane, cells, and here there is the uh, apical chamber that uh, represents the uh, intestinal uh, lumen in vivo. And here we have the uh, basolateral chamber that uh, mimics the um, blood circulation and uh, lymphatic system in uh, vivo.
So after uh, differentiation, the cells are exposed from the uh, apical compartment, so the intestinal lumen in vivo, for 24 hours to uh, anything B1, 0 0.5, 1.5, 3 and 6 micromolar, to the same concentration of anatin B1 associated to 3 micromolar povericin, and the same concentration of anatin B1 associated with 3 micromolar bovericin and 20 micromolar uh, zeralenone. Uh, the evaluated endpoints are the uh, tier before the exposure and after 24 hours of uh, treatment with our mycotoxins. For each uh, uh, insert, three uh, measurements are uh, taken and then for the uh, data uh, analysis, we use the uh, average value. Uh, the other evaluated parameter is the interleukin-8 uh, uh, release into the culture medium after 24 hours of exposure through uh, ELISA uh, assay. As for the IPEC-J2 uh, cells, these uh, are uh, seeded at a density of 180,000 cells per uh, square centimeter. The medium changing is performed again three uh, times per week. And uh, uh, under our uh, standard laboratory condition, the differentiation and the polarization is achieved after 14 days of uh, uh, culture. After uh, differentiation, the cells are exposed from the uh, human compartment for 24 hours to anatin B1, 0 0.5, 1.5, and 3 uh, micromolar, and to the same concentration of uh, anatins plus 3 uh, micromolar uh, bovericin. Uh, the tear is again measured just before the uh, exposure and after 24 hours of uh, treatment. And again, three uh, measurements are uh, taken. So the uh, results concerning the IPEC-J2 cell model, we observed a significant tear increase after the exposure for 24 hours to 0 0.5, 1.5, and uh, 6 micromolar anatin B1 and after the exposure to 3 micromolar uh, bovericin. Concerning the uh, mycotoxin association, we observed a significant increase after the exposure to 0 0.5 and 6 micromolar anatin B1 associated with 3 micromolar bovericin. Uh, lastly, we observed a significant uh, increase after the exposure to 0 0.5 micromolar anatin B1, 3 micromolar bovericin, and 20 micromolar zeralenone. Moreover, we observed a positive correlation between the uh, tier values and the anatin B1 concentrations. Conversely, no significant effect have been observed in terms of interleukin-8 release no, after the exposure to the mycotoxins alone, nor after the uh, exposure to the uh, associations. Considering the other intestinal model, the IPEC-J2 cell model, we observed again a significant tear increase after 24 hours of exposure to 1.5 and 3 micromolar povericin, uh, sorry, anatin, and after the exposure to the association 0 0.5 micromolar anatin B1 and 3 uh, micromolar uh, bovericin. With this cell model also, we observed a positive correlation, a strong positive correlation between the tier values and the anatin B1 concentrations. So uh, the conclusion uh, related to these uh, preliminary results obtained with intestinal uh, cell uh, models, Using the CACO2 cells, we observed a significant tear increase after the exposure for 24 hours to anatin B1 and after the exposure to the uh, association anatin B1 bovericin and anatin B1 bovericin plus zeralenone. 
but on the contrary, no effects of uh, anything B1 alone or associated in terms of interleukin-8 release have been uh, observed. As for the IPEG-J2 cell model, we observed, again, a significant uh, increase uh, after the exposure to anything B1, but uh, with higher uh, dosages. And we observed uh, also an um, increase after the co-exposure anything B1 bovaricin. Uh, the future perspective with uh, these intestinal models, we are going to evaluate the uh, CACO2 cell uh, interleukin-6 release after the exposure to anything B1 alone and in uh, co-exposure. Uh, using the IPG2 uh, cell model, we would like to uh, evaluate the co-exposure anything B1, bovaricin and seralenone. And using the same cellular model, we would like to investigate the cytokine release, interleukin 8 and 6, after the exposure to uh, the same mycotoxin uh, combination. Moreover, we would like to expand the uh, time of exposure to 48 uh, hours, both on IPEG-J2 cells and on the CACO2 cells. Uh, keeping the same uh, mycotoxin combination and uh, uh, concentrations. Moreover, we are evaluating the absorption profiles and uh, we would like to make a comparison between the in vitro human-based model and the species-specific intestinal uh, model. Uh, now, let's talk about this uh, um, interesting cellular model that is widely used for the uh, evaluation of endocrine disruptor uh, substances. So, we are dealing with two uh, different, uh, how can I say, two different approaches. Um, we have evaluated the intestinal effects of mycotoxins and their absorption profiles with the intestinal models. Now we are going to uh, investigate another aspect that is related to uh, mycotoxin toxicity, that is the uh, potential endocrine disruptor uh, effect. Uh, in this uh, context, bovine granulosa uh, cells represent a reliable in vitro uh, model um, for species specific in vitro model for the uh, evaluation of potential endocrine disruptor effects in mycotoxin. The uh, evaluated endpoints are the cell proliferation, the uh, steroidogenesis in terms of uh, uh, estradiol, estradiol and progesterone, and uh, the cytochrome activity, namely the cytochrome 19A1 and 11A1. Uh, the ovaries were collected at a local slaughterhouse from dairy cattle and non-pregnant beef. After uh, collection, they were washed three times in saline solution. Then they were immersed in 70% uh, ethanol, washed again in saline uh, solution. And for the uh, transport to the laboratory, they were transferred into uh, antibiotic solution and kept on uh, ice until the um, cellular collection. Based on the uh, surface diameter of uh, the uh, follicle, uh, the small follicle, namely those with a surface diameter of one to five uh, millimeters, the small follicle were aspirated using a needle collected to a syringe, as you can see in this, uh, in this picture. Uh, then the granulosa cells were recovered from the follicular uh, fluid by centrifugation. After collection, the cells were um, washed uh, two uh, times with the serum-free medium 
and uh, then they were uh, suspended in a uh, so-called short-term medium, which is a medium added with uh, enzymes in order to prevent uh, clumping of the cells. The number of viable cells is assessed using tripon blue exclusion method. Then the cells are seeded in 24 well plates and the cultures are kept at 38.5 degree, degree in a humidified 95% air and 5% CO2 environment. The medium changing is performed daily and uh, daily the cells are uh, checked for uh, contamination. During the first uh, 48 hours of uh, culture, the cells are maintained in 10% uh, fetal cough serum containing medium in order to uh, obtain an optimal attachment. Uh, then uh, the cells are washed twice with serum-free medium and transferred in serum-free medium added with testosterone as an estradiol uh, precursor. At this point, we can, uh, add the, uh, we can add the various treatments. So here we have um, an outline of uh, the general application of this uh, model for our uh, purpose. We can use this uh, model with uh, testing traditional mycotoxin or emerging mycotoxin. We can uh, expose uh, this uh, compound together or alone. We can see if there are uh, interaction since it has been demonstrated that it is a very good predictive spe specific in vitro model for uh, endocrine disruptor. Uh, here I, I have wrote the, the bibliography of this presentation and I have highlighted in bold the um, research performed by my team on the uh, topic. And uh, thank you very, very much for your attention. Okay.